so we had a nice night. It was very, very cold. I think it got down to about four degrees last night, so it was pretty cold. The first really cold night of the year. So we've been used to traveling in summer and uh, this is something else. So I can only imagine what's going to happen when we get into winter, winter proper that is. So when we head up to the highlands in December or January, whoa, that's going to be really cold. I'm not sure I'm going to enjoy it much, but uh, it's going to be adventure, whatever's going to happen. So we, we've had a nice night at um, St. Monans and we've woken up to another beautiful day. Um, everything's packed away and we've got the kettle on, which is what you hear in the background for our coffee. So we'll have coffee and then we'll probably move on to uh, the next the next little harbour along, which is, what's it? Pit and Ween. Pit and Ween. Pit and Ween. So it's just a few miles up the road and uh, it's another beautiful harbour. Again, one of many in, in the south coast of Fife. So we'll head off after our coffee. Okay, we arrived at Pitt and Ween and lovely harbour. Much bigger harbour than uh, the Arth Harbour at uh, St Monans. Much bigger, so uh, much bigger fishing boats, proper harbour. So we'll walk up this little jetty and see what's at the end. A lot of fishing nets. Miles and miles of nets. And then the harbour's on the, on the other side. I can only imagine how bitter and cold it must be fishing in winter time. Really bad. <laughs> the life of a fisherman, you've got to be born to it, I think. Yeah, that's a really nice view. So that's a nice contender. If only there were some boats in the harbour here, that would have made it really, really good. So here's the little lighthouse. This is very pretty and unusual as well. I haven't seen one quite like that before. It's only a little one. Wow, what a view. So you can see St Monans all down the end there where we were last night. Head down here for a bit. <laughs> Got to hold on to my hat now. Lovely perspective coming in on the picture there. Whew. That's really fun. That's beautiful too. Fisherman at work? Definitely the fisherman at work. So we're heading down the last of the piers, or sea defences, just to have a last look at the what subject I'm going to tackle today. These boats are, are pretty good too, that's quite a nice view. Really complicated though. I'm not into hugely complicated scenes. Um, I, I like to simplify it a bit, but they are pretty. That's quite nice, that, that little scene there of that boat coming in. That's nice, so that might be good. Look at that. The houses are so lovely here. Really nice view of the harbour. Okay, here we go. Okay, this is the scene I'm going to pick today, and it's going to be off those little boats down there, the blue and the red one, and maybe the one in the back there, and sort of an array of other boats in the, in the distance. So it's a really complicated subject and I don't want to paint it that complicated. So it's going to be simplified again, but this is going to be quite challenging to simplify it enough, but then to keep it real looking as well. So uh, we'll give it a go. Can't go that way. Okay, so 
so I'm ready to start and um, I've chosen to have a little bit of water in the front ground. The main, the main uh, subject matter is this boat here, that blue one coming into it, then progressively going back on it. So I'm going to start by sketching it out um, with a brush, just in trying to indicate where things are. So uh, again, not, not being too, trying to be as accurate as I can, but you're never going to be completely accurate with this sort of thing. Especially with the boats as they're moving around a lot. There's a rough sketch of the painting I'm about to do just to indicate things where they are. That certainly helps me for later on. So there are errors in it, but as I paint, I correct those errors. So um, yeah, I think that's quite a nice composition there. So let's hope that none of those boats move. So again, I'm using uh, turpentine, just pure turpentine at the moment, that's my first layer. Uh, just sort of brushing things on really, nothing, um, nothing that complicated, a rough colour of what it is. So what I'm trying to do is to get the tone of it right, the value of it right. Pop a bit of sky and it's a sort of light bluey colour. Not a strong colour today, which is nice. One of the problems with uh, painting um, landscape is having too blue a sky and I never really enjoy too blue a sky it just seems too bright yeah that's it blocked in enough for me now I'm going to go straight into painting the actual uh, details of it um, it is so complicated so you've got to start off with detail first really so that's the blocking in of it done so I'm going to not use the turpentine anymore and go into a mixture of turpentine and oil okay so I've started at the top left hand side of it with the building so, so that was a nice easy place to start although perhaps I should be starting with the boats as they could potentially move and I thought it's quite nice just to get a grip on something and the buildings just seem quite easy to to, uh, to start. I'm going to do my first bit on the blue boat now and I'm deciding whether this is going to be a slightly muted down painting the last painting I did was quite quite blue quite colorful so I think I might change it this time to make it to bring the colors down a notch so it's not so bright this is quite a complicated scene and I think that if you make it if you make the colors too bright it's not only too bright it's too complicated at the same time so I'm just going to mute all the colors down a bit see how that goes I do like the colour blue, it's such a, it's so interesting for me. And it goes nice and dark. Right, so I'm starting the, uh, the little boat here and um, just trying to block in the colours, let the colours sit by themselves. Um, working on the reflection as well, so you can see that the, the, the light how the cabin is reflecting in here so just trying to few, put a few of those lights in uh, definitely love the work of artists who hint at things rather than the ultra realist detail a wonderfully red boat next to it it's a perfect contrast between that and the blue boat All the changes of color on it So I've started these two boats now, now I'm going to go on along to this boat here and the reason why there's a fisherman on the boat so it may disappear so I'm going to try and get it in now and it might save me a lot of grief later on. So it's a, another blue boat, in the distance, I get as much detail into this as I can for as long as I can really so if it goes away. So roughly where things are, it's got a nice red roof to it. And then it sides come down to nice blue here, side of the boat. And then the rest of the boat is quite a sort of grey colour. I'm just going to start working on the, the boat behind it now. You, you can't really work it out particularly clearly, but it's there just about. So I'm just going to try and hint that there's a boat behind. Um, it just sort of sticks out slightly, nothing too dramatic. So something like that. It's got a big 
boxes on the top I put in. Sort of, sort of uh, chimney there. Ah, it's super complicated. I can barely work out with my eye what's going on over there. We've got a window in here. My fears had happened and the boat has dis is, is going now. So I'm going to try and capture the last moments of it. So little, it did go in the end. Would you believe it? Tanya was right. She said, you should paint that boat now while it's still here. I said, nah, it'll be around. But no, it's gone. There we go. At least I did get some of it down. Okay, that's okay. So just putting in the side of the building, trying to make it stand out a bit more. So the wind, putting in, letting the windows come forward. So just a few little snippets of detail in there. Not too much again. And the windows around the side as well. So I'm, I'm getting quite a few of the effects right now. I'm working on the reflections of the boats on the bottom right, just trying to make them come out and it seem like water and a reflection. That's always a difficult thing. Um, so, yeah, and I'm trying to keep it loose. To, it's quite that little knife edge of between too much detail and like a child's done it. That's where I'm trying to keep it. And um, it seems to be going quite well that way at the moment. Uh, there's, there's lots of loose areas, but it looks, looks quite nice. Attractive. I'll get the, the wall coming in on the right here now. And it's shadow, which is a nice green. Coming in. And then get the blue going up to it. I'm trying to make that blue a little bit softer at the moment, not not a strong blue. I'm just painting that funny looking boat in the distance, that fishing boat. Um, it's a strange shape, I haven't seen one quite like that before. Sort of a lot of, lot of side to it, not much, not much at, on the, uh, no deck. Some sort of mast system it's got. And then the white plimsoll line at the bottom, which I might put in later with a finer brush. I've got one. I'm going to attempt to do the bigger boats at the back, at the, right at the far distance of it, but it's just going to get like a little value study, so a dark, a mid-tone, and the light part of it. So I'm not going to place any detail into it. So I've placed the darks in of the blue, now just a one dot for the lighter parts, there and there. So that's, that's the basic shape of the boat. And in the same way, you've got a light, you've got a light white here, and then a dark, a light, a white white on the other side of the boat. It's just hinting at it. I do use that word a lot, hinting, but I can't think of a better word to describe it. It's, it's, that's, that's one of the great skills of painting, really, to be able to depict something with almost nothing. I'm just going to pop the lighthouse in, in the, in the distance. I've actually moved it left a bit because I quite like the scene of it so you wouldn't normally see this in this composition so but I, I like it and um, I think it's nice to include things that uh, you know, twist your fancy really so they got the harbour wall coming below it So doing lots of little detail of the pictures now. So reflectors, reflections of the plimsoll line. Over that side. Slightly yellower than the actual one. Okay, and then kind of capture the sparkling nature of the cockpit. I'm just going to put in some of the, the masts. Uh, these little details are what will connect the painting together. 
and make it sort of come into the rest of the picture. So many details in a harbour like this. You, you've got to be quite selective to what you're actually going to put in. If you put everything in, you'll never finish the painting. So you have to work out what you can get away with. Again, on the other side now. So I'm going to make that a white. Exactly the same way. So sail coming up to here. And it's the details which really, really, it's like a pyramid, the details. So the details are the last thing you put on. So right at the very bottom of the painting, when you begin the painting, it's like a pyramid. So the base of it's really broad and then it gets, and they use bigger brushes, and then it gets to the more and more finished until you're right at the peak of it where you're using tiny brushes just to hint a few details at it. Time to have a go at the sky now just to finish that off. So um, it's... it's it's quite a light blue. So go draw that across. And then a bit of a blue patch there. And there's sort of purpley sort of clouds in the distance. Very funny shape. So the, the light clouds zigzag in between the the purpley purpley clouds. I think I finished it now. Um, yeah, it's, 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 it's one of those points again where you've got to know when to stop and knowing when to stop is um, quite a difficult thing to learn and it, there's a temptation to just carry on and on and on and on and on but you've got to just leave it at some point. So I think this is the point I'm going to leave it. Um, just hint at the details. So I'm just going to sign it quickly and that'll be it. So I'm going to sign it bottom left down corner because um, there's nothing going on down there, so it's a good place to put my signature. Again, my brush is a bit knackered at the moment, so hopefully it'll, it'll be okay. Potter. There we go, good enough. Great, so there's the finished painting. And I tried to subdue it, but it still looks quite colourful to me. But um, I've kept it loose, which is my main aim of today. That's what I was hoping to do, and I have kept it loose, but also kept it quite real as well. I haven't really gone into the details too much. You see the details in there, going up to the boat, which came back in the end, but docked somewhere else. And that's the house at the top, the far boats and the lighthouse in the distance. And there we go, that's the final thing again, right there. Oh, it's getting a bit chilly now. <laughs> so the wind's picked up as well, which is make, making us retreat to the camper van, which we did. We finished the painting about an hour ago and I was looking through the videos of uh, what we'd done and I thought, well, where's the last video that says goodbye to everyone? So <laughs> I looked at it and we hadn't done it. I thought, oh no. <laughs> so we've come back out just to say goodbye and that I hope you all enjoyed the video and uh, hopefully you can uh, subscribe to us and uh, maybe give us a message, that'd be good. And uh, until next time, thanks very much and goodbye.